The Eminence in Shadow, 20 disturbing dark sad facts from any anime stats. Let's see what's gonna happen. Possessed One. The cult of Diablos has tricked the world into condemning the people to develop symptoms of demon possession. Yeah, demon possession, like, this is just straight up. Someone, a uh, chatter said it perfectly. He said, cult of Diablos, like the possession, amount of overload. That is just imagine like just isekai cancer. It randomly happens. I thought it was like specific to elf girls and the cult of Diablos were doing experiments on them. They weren't doing experiments, but it's just like isekai cancer. Possessed 2. Demon possession victims are perceived as monsters and are feared by many. I mean, if you look at them, look at this thing. Like, would you not be terrified of that? Like, I, I mean, it looks pretty fucking terrifying. Look at that. It's a monstrous blob. That's the funniest shit, though, when this monstrous blob turned into alpha. <laughs> Heartless parents. To get rid of them, families voluntarily hand over their possessed daughters to the Holy Church. The Holy Church. Well, we know the cult of Diablos in the Holy Church, they had ties in episode one, right? Damn. The parents just sell the kids off that got infected with like isekai cancer and they get experimented on. That's actually super fucked up. Now, the Holy Church. The church uses demon possession victims as materials in their experiments to create the tears of Diablos. These are the pills that you can take to become like awakened. Like when Zenon Griffey takes the pills, Getan recently took the pills. I can't remember who else took the pills recently, but you know, this shit just makes you stronger. And then, no, as I swear to God, every time we fought a person that took these pills, they get immediately bodied. Like Shadow kind of toys with them before they take the pills. And as soon as after they take the pills, they say some dumb shit about becoming powerful. And Shadow's like, get the fuck out of here. Done. I've yet to see a single person actually pop off with the whole, the, the pills. Technically, Getan did just obliterate Yukime after taking the pills. But I'm talking about a direct fight with, like, Sid. Power pills. The cult produced 12 special pills called the Pearls of Diablo. So the Pearls of Diablos is different from the Tears of Diablos. The Pearls are, like, more refined, right? It grants immortality to those who consume them. I think this is what the, um... Nelson was doing this, right? I think this is what Nelson was talking about in Season 1. They use these pills as a bargaining chip to recruit powerful individuals into forming the cult, forming the uh, the Knights of the Rounds. And I'm starting to realize, like, Knights of the Rounds, um, I played Fate Grand Order, the game, and why I say this is because there's actually a Knights of the Rounds, like, arc there, which is influenced by, like, actual ancient, not, like, mo it's like history, right? The Knights of the Round table is a real thing. Like, names like um, Arthur Pendragon, fucking Mordred. I'm sure there's a lot of different Knights names that I'm not reminding I don't know right now, but I'm sure every Knights of the Round Table is going to follow that, that legendary names, right? Brutal Ambition. Lutheran was the former 12 seated Knights Round, but lost his possession due to his illness. Fucking Sherry Barnett's like adoptive dad. Everything he did was for the sole purpose of giving Sherry Barnett a good life. Sorry, of reclaiming his position in the cult. Damn, old man got... Old man got fucking L plus ratio. Then he said, you're, you're past your peak, old man. He got fucking fired. Okay, Sid's torture. During the interrogation nights, denailed. Uh, de during the interrogation, the nice denailed Sid on both hands. I think this is like the, the hammering of the nails, right? To get information about Princess Alexia. But Sid didn't really... Oh, denail. Like, no, no, no. Rip the fingernails out, huh? They fucking ripped the fingernails out, but like he didn't give a shit. He loved it. In fact, he was like, please do it more. I need to like make it look like I suffered like an NPC defeat. Your know, newest backstory is fucked, right? Because Nui had a fiance. So Nui was once a noble daughter named Nicoletta Marquez. From the Marquez Marquez. <laughs> From the Marquez Marquez family? I think the Marquez with the EZ is like, you know, Spanish in nature. But then the Marquis with the S, I think that's like supposed to be some, I don't know, some kind of title, like a baron or some kind of noble. Uh, uh, unless the Marquez, Marquez is first name, last name. I, I don't know. That's hilarious though. Marquez, Marquez. That's Edison Shadow fucking puns right there, dude. It's a comedy. All right. She was a noble daughter. Her parents disowned her upon discovering symptoms of demon possession on her body. At least they didn't sell her to the church. I don't, I don't know, man. News backstory three. Her, never mind. Her father. 
Oh, we we didn't sell Nui to the church. We paid the church to take her. What the fuck, Dad? Her father paid the Diablo's cult to take her away and created a false story that she had passed away due to... Yo, fuck the dad. We should have a quick side story about fucking destroying Marquez Marquez, man. What the fuck? Master torture. She's now... Oh, they even staged a fake funeral for her. And like, um, there's also that guy Marco, right? The fiance. I don't think he's aware of all this. She's now Shadow Garden's interrogator, torturing and breaking her victims to get information. I think we saw like an example of this when, what's their name? Skell and Poe, right? They got the tickets. I forget, was it just one of them? But Poe had the tickets and they were like, trying to, no, yeah, they, Skell was there too. We were trying to get her to the fucking beach episode. It's like, pretty lady come with us. It's like, duh. The white demon. Now this is the, the guard that got off screen. The white demon used to serve as a knight's captain in an unnamed kingdom. Mass murderer. He secretly abused his position to murder innocent civilians only to see their scared and fearful faces. But he was just a coward. He became a fucking a knight's captain that abused his fucking... Like just a fucking cop in modern day life. He just abused his power and just terrorized people. What a piece of shit. Mass murder and now he's a dirty coward. He was eventually caught in the act by one of his colleagues. Oh. Leading him to massacre his entire knight's order before fleeing. Damn. That knight's order must have been weak as fuck to be get taken out by... I'm sorry. The white demon, he's actually probably pretty strong, right? But if you compare him to the standards of some other characters we have, I was like, come on, get the fuck out of my face. Oh, we got a season two, another season two character. Marie. When Marie reached the age of 13, she was sold to become a prostitute in the Lala city. Why did I think that it was going to be some happy facts when, I, when it says disturbing, dark, sad facts? I'm sorry, Marie. I, you got to do what you got to do. Epsilon, she was the daughter of an elven noble family who abandoned her after she was discovered to have demon possession. Everybody, just, even Delta too, right? Like everybody, their family, as soon as it's like, oh, you have demon possession, get the fuck out of here. That's so cold. Rose Oriana. Rose was planned by the cult to be a test subject before she was even born. Is this spoilers? I didn't know this. What? I, I, we'll, 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 we'll ignore it. We'll ignore it. Interesting fact, though. We, we, uh, I, if, if we... It's, 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 ah, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. So tech, We know that the mom was involved in all of this from the beginning. Like, straight up. Before the dad even died. The mom was there from the entire time, right? More... So Let's get to the next one, too. All right. We're not going to watch the cult victim. Because this cult victim is Geese's daughter, right? No, no, no. This is, this is Geese's, like, um, daughter or sister. I forget, I forget one of the two. All right. We'll, we'll skip this, too. All right. Tragic villain. Ah, fuck! No, no. Can I read the... Can I read the tragic villain one? No, this is Grease, right? Grease, sorry. I call them Geese. I'm sorry. It's, his name is Grease. <laughs> Grease was forced to work by the cult for them with the false promise to cure his daughter. That's really fucked up. The Grease was really out there. Te technically, they did kidnap Claire and all that stuff in episode two, but damn. It's a false promise to cure his daughter and like, we fucking kill him and then... I, I, we Technically, we saved his daughter, right? Technically. All right, next. Skip, skip the Zeta one? Okay. That fuck. There's a lot of spoilers. There's a lot of spoilers. I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. The Oriana one was too much. That's the shitty thing about... Um, I'm not blaming anime stats, but it's like, damn, I want to see more Eminence and Shadow content. But there's so much spoilers. So it's like, fuck. I can't, I can't get too into it, but I got you guys to watch out for me. Now, like his videos, guys, if you did. Sub to his channel. I, re I really enjoy watching his infographics on interesting facts like this. It's really good.